All right, I have Julia on the line. Hello. Hello, hello. And Sunflower Bean will be at VersoFest kicking everything off Thursday, March 30th at 7 o'clock with the wonderful DJ Hysterica opening. Hey, Julia, how's it going? It's so good. How are you? Good. And, you know, I think for a lot of us, uh, it feels like this is a Fairfield homecoming. You've, you've spent a lot of time in the area. I have, yeah. Well, I have a lot of family in the area. Um, my dad currently lives um, in the Bridgeport area, and I've just been hearing so many good things about musical developments and just a really great energy um, coming out of there. And I'm really excited that there's uh, finally a festival where all of this can come together, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Yeah, it's a re it's already in its second year and already turning into a very kind of a special space, I would call it. You know, it's just, I keep telling people that our programming, it, there, there's a lot of it, but I'm like, just come hang out. Who knows, you know, what you'll see, what you'll be inspired by. It's just a really great couple of days. Um, you are en route to South by Southwest. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> are you excited about that? I'm super excited. You know, I think um, the first time I ever went to South by Southwest in my in my first band ever, when I was a teenager, um, you know, I had no showcases and I just busked on the street for like dollar bills and like business cards and just tried to do anything that I could to be in the mix. And this year, actually, we've worked with... Um, south by southwest themselves to to book an official showcase with some other partners uh from new york and we've actually curated this um stage that's like all the hot new rock music in new york city so to me it kind of feels like we're trying to use our story and um our relationship to south by to um give back to our community here and create a space where anyone who's in Texas right now can come and like really experience a slice of what uh, music is like here right now. So I feel really excited about that and, and excited for the opportunity to do something um, different. Yeah, that's really uh, beautiful to be able to kind of um, showcase and lift other people up. You know, it's it's always nice when you have an opportunity to to do that because uh, otherwise, you know, it's just it's the next gig. But that's that's really special that you could be kind of lighting a new fire. Well, you know, it takes so many people. It takes so much support and so in so many ways to make something happen. And it, it can be really um, challenging and isolating to to be, you know, a band sometimes. And I think any way that we can um, foster more friendship, more support, uh, more great music, I think that's really, you know, my dream for this part of my career and, and looking forward. I just want to um, stay a part of it and always be trying to support cool, different, exciting new music ha that's happening. And what is in store for this year with the band? You guys are hitting the 10 year mark. People like round numbers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, you know, it kind of started during the pandemic where we were able to sort of shift um, how we worked to, uh, to be really doing a lot of recording, you know, for a lot of our career. Um, and especially before the pandemic, we were on the road for like a hundred to 150 nights out of the year. Um, so there was a big shift in, um, really focusing on our writing and recording. Um, and I think for us right now, we're in this place where, kind of like I said, we're able to take on some of these more fun and creative projects where we can lift up and, and support the scene with what we know, but also I think move forward with some confidence in what we've done. And, and we like to turn things on, you know, their heads a lot. We like to kind of surprise our fans and surprise ourselves. And, you know, we're playing a ton of new material, um, at South by and we're playing a ton of new material at Verso Fest because our goal is always to have 
the most exciting show and something that feels really true to us. And I think that that will always resonate with the audience, you know, when they're seeing something fresh and something real. So I think we're just moving forward with confidence and creativity. That's all you can really do. We're, we've been lucky to like make a living as working artists and I'm just ready to build and keep building. That's really beautiful. And, um, you know, your work, Sunflower Beans work, it's always been just so refreshing and sobering to see that you guys are working for more justice and equity. And you've been extremely transparent about the world and how you view it. And uh, just thoughts on that. I mean, there's so, to me, it seems like there's so few artists calling attention to the uh, predicaments (laughs) that we're in. Whereas it would seem, you know, bands of the past were kind of banging the drum for the, the revolution. Totally. Well, you know, I think there's, I think there's a few things that go into it. Um, you know, for me, uh, I sort of got into the music scene as a kid um, in the East Village um, as sort of part of what was called the anti-folk scene. Um, and for a lot of artists and people that were in that scene and just around where I lived, you know, going to a show, you know, we would do that one night and, you know, go, we would go to a protest the next night, you know, or the next day, whether it, mostly, you know, animal rights or Bloomberg or just different stuff, anything that we felt, anything that I saw people feel and care about, they really, they really, you know, had it on their sleeve and they really, um, kept that a part of their lives actively. So the way that I was brought into art, you know, I, I really felt immediately that it was like, it was really just part of it. And it was part of my duty as an artist to stand, to, you know, keep those opinions with me and keep them as a through line through what I was doing. I didn't realize until later when I learned more that a lot of people, you know, for, for a lot of people, and especially with music, it can be a very a political place because you know they 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 want kind of a break from all of the intensity of reality um but the way that that ended up relating to sunflower bean is you know my bandmate nick is i call him a very external writer he's he thinks a lot about culture and he thinks a lot about the times and i'm a little bit more internal and the way that we come together is to try to create kind of um, a very, like, kind of personal reaction to, like, the lived experience of the now. Um, and with that being said, we've always just taken cues from, you know, what's been happening. And especially after 2016 and that, uh, you know, that was the year our first album came out and also the year Trump was elected you know, that really shifted our world as we, we would be driving around the country and all the time and just kind of soaking up the energy that was there. And, you know, that has led us to many, many different experiences like opening for Bernie or, you know, I started an activism project where I was interviewing um, that kind of that group of young women in their late twenties that were starting to run for office kind of in, in retaliation of, uh, the old regime. Um, and yeah, I've just always, I've always kept it. I've always felt it was important as an artist and luckily Sunflower Bean has also felt the same. And I just think that there's so much more that you can do than, you know, spend your whole career trying to be like a really easygoing celebrity and then like raise money for the elephants or something. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, I think that's a great, great, amazing thing to do. Of course. I, you know, I don't want someone to twist those words for me a million years later. Anyone that does anything um, positively for the world, you know, with, with their platform, I support I just think, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be taking up space and you're going to be standing, you know, you're going to be in these places, you know, you should use every moment that you have to, to try, you know, and to do, to do more than just 
go over smoothly. I think that's part of the duty of, of being an artist is to be brave and help other people be brave. Verso Studios is it's all about the emerging and supporting, you know, the next artists uh, to, to come, really. So I wonder if you have any advice for people who are just starting out, you know, as a filmmaker or a musician or a sound engineer, advice for uh, emerging artists. Totally. I would say advice for emerging artists would be to really, like when I when I started thinking about you know, trying to live the life of an artist. When I was a kid, I I kind of created this sort of list for myself of things that I kind of felt were like the 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 outline or even like the minimum of, of what I would need in my life for it to be okay. And I said, all right, well, I need to have a roof over my head. I need to have food that I can eat. I need to have... Um, enough money so that I have freedom to to follow these ideas. I need to have the the freedom of my of my schedule to follow these ideas, and I need to have good friends and family around me that I love and I can spend time with. And I kind of based that off of different artists that I saw around me in the East Village. And I think it's really important to create like a grounding sort of like the, like sort of minimum of of your life that you can accept and be okay with because i think when you know what that is it also it, it just it it helps you stay stay grounded in the work you know because a, a lot of times the stuff the the arts you know you do it because you love it and it has different challenges but you should always try to find a way to stay connected to why you're there because you could always leave and it wouldn't matter if you're there you have to be there because you want to be there and you have to know why and as much as you you know you, you make this outline so you know what you can accept but also make sure you enjoy it you know there's no point in in living a life of creativity if you also don't have the space to um to enjoy enjoy the work and you know stay sane and and you know protect your mental health so those those, I don't know if that makes sense but those would be my two main pieces of advice like know what you can accept but also know that you have the right to celebrate because living living a life and creating a life around creativity is worth celebrating and not to <clears throat> excuse me create the obvious segue but uh we'll all be celebrating on thursday march 30th <laughs> at seven o'clock with sunflower bean and dj hysterica julia i really want to thank you for this short interview and i don't know if you have any parting words for us <laughs> of course um thank you for the interview and um i'm just really excited to be a, a stronger part of the Westport scene and I'm really excited for the for Verso Fest. It's going to be awesome. So I can't wait. I agree. Thanks, Julia. All right. Talk to you soon.